So tonight I wanted to, uh, again, we're sort of sidetracking on master class, uh, doing some things that are sort of mentioned in the book, but not really covered uh, very extensively, if at all. Uh, so tonight I wanted to go over some uh, blitzing type uh, considerations. Uh, uh, you know, Mochi, uh, his section was, uh, you know, blitzing versus priming. Primarily in, 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 in for pristine and priming, priming formations. So he talked, and that's a very early game. He talked a lot about that, but we never actually talked about blitzes or primes. So I want to cover blitzing tonight. And the next two sessions, we'll cover primes, priming in terms of checker play and uh, cue play. Um, and then we'll get back to the, the uh, chapter three, which uh, is uh, Mochi's uh, back game uh, chapter. So uh, we covered, I covered a little bit of blitzing in uh, an earlier book uh, where we sort of extended beyond the book, the, uh, the beginner's book. Uh, I, forget, I forget the name of it, but, but I wanted to cover it again, a few, a few topics, a very important topic this, uh, in that um, this is where, if you can run a bit less successfully, this is where you get the gammon and you win four points instead of one or two. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's very it's very fun if you're on the uh, the blitzing side, um, not so much if you're on the uh, receiving end of this. But um, uh, but the, you're you're doing a couple things that are different um, than uh, what you normally would that in, in the early game. So um, and so I would cover say basically. Uh, well, first of all, what's the goal of blitzing? When you're, if you're in a blitz, what's your primarily focus on? Does anyone know that? Close out. Uh, close out. The close out, yeah. Well, I'm looking for something a little bit. Yes, that's the ultimate goal, but um, specifically before you quite get there. Uh, to avoid your opponent getting an anchor. Exactly. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. You don't want to let your your opponent get the anchor. Once your opponent, the opponent has the anchor, then he's got he's got some life uh, left because he can come in off the bar and uh, as your as, you know, as the blitzer is trying to get his his last checkers around the board, uh, you you, can, you if you make the anchor you can always come in or or attempt to block your opponent uh, and and turn it around. Very frustrating to have it turned around when you're you know, on the verge of, of, of the gamut. So uh, a couple things that are, that are odd and different here. Uh, one, but are very important to learn. So the example I have now is, is, is such an example. So we have double threes to play. What's the right play with the double threes? Switch twice, six, three, and four, one. Switch three, exactly, yeah. So this is the switch play. Um, and it's extremely important with, uh, uh, on the blitz because it does a number of things, um, puts, it puts black on the bar again with, you know, his two, he's, he slotted the ace point and the three point. If he makes either one of those, he's got a chance of avoiding the gammon or, and uh, some chance of turning it around. Uh, so you want to prevent him from making that anchor. Now this is a little bit unusual in that you're in doing so you're you're making yeah you're making points that generally you don't want you know three point is okay but generally you don't want to make the ace point but you're and you're freeing up your four and your six which are generally more valuable points but um, something to remember is that if you're in a blitz uh, one point is as good as another. Uh, as long as you have covers uh, and, and more ammunition to bring down to, to make the remaining points. Uh, in fact, something else that you're doing here um, is you're bringing these two checkers automatically into play without moving them. So right now, uh, this one, for instance, this one really isn't you know in the zone. Typically, we talk about in the zone as, be, as being you know within six pips of the last open spot. So the zone here is from nine forward. Um, this one, you know, you might uh, early games you might consider this in the zone, but but right now it can't. It doesn't have a direct 
uh, direct reach to an open spot. When you do the point switch, the double point switch, now it's in. You know, now it is fully in the zone. You can reach the the six point or the four point, um, and uh, uh, so you you know by without even moving it, you brought it into the zone. You made it a, a much much more constructive. You made its placement much more constructive, just by opening up a, a deeper uh, uh, what what typically would be considered a better point, uh, and giving you access to it. So this is this is something uh, that. Uh, I, I don't have many, well, there are lots of examples we could go into this, but uh, I, it's one of the th you know, things I think most people don't quite get uh, at first until they've seen it enough times. So um, the point switch, and, and really any time that you're, even if you're attacking, not so much even blissing, but if you're attacking and you roll doubles and can switch a point to put your opponent on the bar, um, it's usually the right thing to do. Um, and in, you know, in this case, and th uh, this example is good because you're you're breaking, you know, you're giving up two points that are really normally very valuable, the six point and the four point. But it's it's anything other than that is a blunder uh, in this situation. Okay. You also uh, <clears throat> you have more pick and pass options when the open points are on the high points too. Like if yeah. If the one and two are open and he gets in and you hit him, you're going to have to leave a block. But if he gets in on the six and you get like a two, three, you can pick and pass and just keep him up while you bring all your guys around. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. Uh, now, in, in this situation, probably you wouldn't pick and pass. Right. Because he's got Black's got nothing going on and Black's got four on the bar. So uh, usually you're probably better off just slide. If, you, if, you, if he comes in, you're going to hit loose. You just probably leave it there. But, you know, if you get, if Black has a better, stronger board, and maybe you're down to your last couple of checkers to bring around, um, yeah, the pick and pass is is is, is always good. Uh, and, and, yeah, and that, and you certainly, and it, that's, it's a good point. With the higher points open, you can, you can do the pick and pass. Um, or if you just, Nick, just. You know, Gary is down the road a bit, but. Uh, since he's got four checkers on the bar, you can see a scenario of why getting their other checkers around and in. And so one way to look at it is you've already cleared the six point. So that's actually a good thing when you're yeah. bare, uh, trying to bear off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You may not. Yeah. You may not even want to make the, the remake the six point. Uh, if the, the, well, so now you would have, and if you rolled the four two next, you would make it because you've got all these checkers to bring around. But you know, if you brought, you know, if you brought them around, uh, you know, maybe you're better off, you know, skipping the six point and just driving them further. I, I think you'd want to make your four point first, but, um, but yeah, that's often the case, um, and particularly if you're, you know, if you don't necessarily need the gammon. Uh, and you just want to get off. You may want you, you may want your opponent to come in at the six past your your checkers. Okay. Uh, next example. So, what's the right play here? Same idea. We switch five four five one. Yeah, this is this is yeah, this is a, a different variation of the point switch. And oh, it's already up here. I, okay, I got it. There we go. Yeah, there's the final. Yeah, here's the arrows. Yeah, and again, you want you don't want your opponent to uh, anchor. So the best way to do that is to put them up on the bar. And in this case, we can't do it safely, but um, like, like you could with doubles, but we can accomplish the same thing uh, or something similar by, um, you know, maybe the arrows are better, by hitting loose from, the, breaking our five point, hitting loose and then covering the four. Um, uh, 
Now we there's some now, and we also, you know, in doing this, we've got these two guys here, which cover the ace point. You can cover the ace point with that. Uh, also, can use them to cover the five. Um, it's uh, uh, and also you, here, here in the case, we're you, you know we're breaking a point that is normally a more valuable point to have. Uh, at least we typically think of it that way, and that we're breaking the five point, but. Uh, in this case, just like in the other case, it's not um, and a blitz pretty much any point is is good. Uh, it also allows us to bring down more checkers in, into the zone by just ro rolling a two and bringing one down from the midpoint. Whereas before, uh, to bring it into the zone to cover the four, we need to bring it down with a three. Um, to cover the four point, we need to bring a checker down from the midpoint with a three or better to get into the 10. So we sort of opened up our, uh, made it easier, I guess, to bring checkers into the zone. But the main idea here uh, is uh, don't let your opponent anchor, put him back on the bar. Uh, and here we have a good, great opportunity to do that by just switching, really switching points. Uh, it's a little more, a little less, uh, these are a little bit trickier to see because it's, you know, doubles are pretty easy to see. And as, as long as you're thinking about it, as long as you know that you should be looking for that, those are easy to see once, once you roll the doubles. These are a little bit trickier in that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're breaking a point and covering another one. So, uh, but these are something you should keep in mind. You know, if you roll old numbers and you're, and, you know, you've got a blot or something like that, um, uh, very useful to do. Uh, here's another variation of this. Um, where this play, uh, you know, instead of hitting uh, hitting off the ace, you're going to hit with the four from five to four, and then cover the ace. Um, and it's this, you know, it's the same idea. Keep your opponent off, uh, prevent your opponent from anchoring, and uh, you know you're going to you're going to make a new point and give up a. You know, often you're giving up the, and give up the better point, what would be considered the better point. Um, but again, the main idea is to keep your opponent from anchoring. Okay, let's look at some a different type of positions now. So, what are the uh, what are we looking at here? So we can make the four. We can cover the one. Well, yeah, we well, gotta let this. It's like one of the tricky parts about blitzing, and you, it's easy to make a lot of errors, is because there are so many productive plays that will improve your position. And the, the tricky part is uh, finding the best one. Um, so we've got a lot of things going on here. We'd like to. You know, okay, so we'd like to not again. The first rule is kind of don't let your opponent anchor. Um, so we'd like to do something about this one. The problem with that is we could use the three to hit, but um, we can't cover. Then we leave two blots, so that's a problem. Um, yeah, we've got other things that we'd like to accomplish. You know, we could like to bring someone down. That would be nice, but. Uh, we also we also have these two checkers back there. We'd like to get them now. Typically, your back checkers you want to bring them around eventually, but they're not your primary concern. Uh, you want to you want to close out your opponent first uh, if you can. However, uh, you know we could we could bring one of the one of the checkers up. That would be helpful. Here's another block to pick up. Uh, all of these things are are. Now that would be my third option, like. Coming up and, and making the one point. Yeah. That's, that's another thing you can look into. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's uh any any strong opinion of what the best play is here? So what um is it too terrible to make the four point? That's a good yeah, that's a good observation. Uh no, it's not too terrible. Uh in fact, it's you know, that's usually a pretty good play. Uh because it's you know. Uh, one less point for your uh, opponent to to come in on. Uh, so that's I was, I was thinking if he if 
if he gets in on the four point, then he possibly can make an anchor yeah. on his next roll. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would probably do the the mid play, like 24, 21, 5, 1, I think. But it's it, all of them are have their own value. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Again, well, it's like being in the candy store where there's too much candy and you you <laughs> gotta pick the best one. Yeah. Um but here, uh, we'll, we'll get the answer. The, the answer is, you know, covering the ace and doing and, and stepping up. Um, you know, and the way, I think the way to think about it is, okay, you can make the four point, and that's here. That's the second best play. Um, but if you do that, uh, you're still leaving this blot open. Uh, so there's, you know, there's a tension. You, you, you don't want to, be, you're not really that worried about leaving the blot. However... Uh, if you want one way to derail the blitz is to get hit. Um, and so you'd rather not get hit. Um, uh, so here we can make a point, uh, the four point, which is a good point to make, or we can make the ace point. So in either, you know, with this play or the, the, the correct play, you make a point. The problem with this play is that you also leave a blot open. Um, and in, in either case, uh, you know, you we haven't we haven't touched his two point. Uh, hitting the two point is hitting loose in two point. That you know that's often the right idea, but not in this case because you're leaving two blots. Um, and so that sort of weighs against it. Um, so uh, you know I, the the way to think about here is okay, we can make a point. So let's make the point. And you could say well, we're making a point here, but here we're making a point, but leaving the blot. So here we're making a point and not leaving a blot. Uh, so that gives the advantage here. We also have the advantage of stepping up. Now we have a chance, a, a direct shot at this blot over here. Um, let's move this blot and see if it matters too much. I don't think it matters that much. It make, makes a little bit of difference here because we still want to escape these back checkers even though that's not a priority now. Um, uh, you know, we, um, in fact, I would say if we had only one there, we might want to bring one down. Yeah, bring it down here. But, but you know, the problem with an original position is that, whoops, is that bringing, the problem with bringing one down here is that we're leaving a block, we're breaking a point. So, um, you know, doing something like this uh, gives a lot of return shots. Um, so there's a lot of factors to weigh in here, but I, you know, the main thing here is okay. Make make the point. Don't leave the blot. Uh, that that makes this play better than this play. Uh, and then the fact that you're stepping up. This was here. The fact that you're stepping up and attacking another block it's just. That's secondary. It's also important, but it's secondary to this. It's, you know, make the point, um, make the point without leaving the block. Even though you're not making the stronger point, uh, uh, again, in a, in a blitz, you know, the the points, the, the value of the points is, doesn't matter nearly as much. Um, okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so I see two two plays that we would want to think about, that I would think about. We could point on the two point. We could come out and hit another checker. Uh, I don't see another strong contender unless someone else does. You can make, the, the, make the 20 point. That would be a third option. Oh, there you, there you go. Okay, yeah, make the 20. Okay. I think having one on the bar already makes me want to make the two point. If, if that weren't there, then I think I would probably hit the hit the other checker. But I think yeah. here, it makes me want to make the two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's and making 20, and it's, and it's by far a lot. The, the thing to... Um, 
keep in mind here is that we're in a blitzing mode. And again, we can point, we can make a point and put black on the bar, uh, making it more difficult for him to anchor. So that's, those are the highest priority. Um, uh, making, making the five point here is just, is not, is the wrong idea, is the wrong game plan. You want to attack uh, and, and, you know, go for the gamut, keep your, you know, don't let your opponent have any life uh, uh, if you can. So here, you know, we make the point, put them on the bar. This is exactly what you want to do. The second best play, okay, putting out a, another checker on the bar, that's always a good thing. But, um, but you know, so now he'll have two on the bar, but you left him two spots where he can anchor uh, and, and have, you know, life left in his game. Uh, the third best play is kind of a half, halfway thing coming up and then covering. So um, the other thing I'm thinking about is that uh, usually when you have 10 on the zone, it's supposed to be a big threat uh, for the defending player. Yeah. In this case, we have 11 on the zone. Yeah. So it seems natural to make the two point. We still yeah. have three more checkers to close the four or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point too. Is uh, there's another so you know one of the one of the uh, keys uh, signs I guess that you can use to know whether you should be considering more blitzing plays versus uh, I guess pure players or more, or more balanced plays is uh, a couple of things. One is you know are you in a blitzing type of situation? One of the signs of a blitzing situation is if you've got uh, ten or more checkers in the zone. Um, here we've got eleven, so this is this calls for you to make blitzing plays. Uh, another situation is it doesn't apply here, but if you've already made a deep point, like the ace point or the two point, um, you should probably be thinking of blitzing. Um, otherwise, you know, the the problem with the ace or the two point is that they're not really valuable points unless you're blitzing, blitzing. But if you've already made them, that's kind of a sign that you should be thinking about blitzing. Um, uh, so those are, you know, those are kind of, you know, like benchmarks or uh, ideas. I mean, again, you, you should be, when you're at the board, over the board, you need to kind of know what your game plan is, know what your strategy is. Um, and, you know, that's what most you were talking about with, you know, priming versus blitzing strategies. So this is, this is actually the, you know, the, the you're well into the blitz now when you have uh, 11 check, here we are 11 check of the zone. And earlier, you know, we had made the ace point. Um, one of the other examples we made the ace point, or we're about to make it. That's a sign that you should, you know, you should be focused mostly on the blitz and other considerations, you know, much less important. Um, all right. All right, so this one. Yeah, actually, this one is sort of speaks to what I was just talking about, coincidentally. Um, so two two good plays that I see. What what are they? Hit and build a point. Yeah, we could hit from, from the back or we can make the three point. Actually, I like. I like bringing two down because I feel like if we if we make the three point we we don't have anything else to attack with if he comes out from the four the five, mm -hmm. but if we bring two checkers down it seems that we have more wood to you know to attack whatever he comes out. I don't know. It's an idea. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good yeah you know, that's a good question, good point, and a good question here. And now, as I said, should we be blitzing here or or what are we doing? So. We've made deep points, so we're you know we we want to you know blitzing is a big good candidate, but we only got nine checkers in the zone, so we're gonna you know we and if we make the three point, then we're you know we're we're left with we still have nine, but we're left with one spare uh, for to you know to hit, which isn't a lot. You know, on the other hand, we would you know we 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 it makes it more difficult for black to anchor if we made another point. Um, so and in, so and in this case, uh, the answer is, you know, he get get that other checker, 
put that on the bar. Um, it's close. The next best play is actually to make a point because you are sort of blitzing. Um, and then the third is two down. Uh, and these are, you know, not that far apart, uh, you know, for the reasons that we're talking about. We, we're not, we're sort of blitzing, but it's not really a strong blitz yet. Um, curious if we did this. Now we have a stronger blitz. And do we make, is a three-point making now? Yeah, now making the three-point is stronger. Because now we've got that extra checker in the zone. Um, let's see. So what did you do that made, the, you just did a plus plus? What made yeah, no, no. Okay, so this was the original position. And we have we have the two deep points, so that suggests, okay, blitzing. But the blitzing play is really making the three point, I would say. Uh, and this is more of a, a, a balanced play. I mean, it's usually right to come out and hit in the outfield because you get up in the race and that sort of thing. So this, so this is because we we're, we're sort of blitzing because we have the deep points, but we only have nine checkers in the zone, so we don't have the ammunition to follow through. Um, and so in this case, it's better to hit loose. Now, if we bring this other checker down into the zone, now we've got 10 in the zone. I see. And so, and that makes it, you know, that makes it even, I guess, whether you make the point or, or you're, you're blitzing. So that's, you know, that's, um, you know, I guess that shifts it, shifts it your, that way. Um, interestingly, if we move this checker here, you know, which point do we make? Do we make the three point or do we make the five point? It's almost always right to make the five point. So that's probably what I would do, but it's close. And uh, I think the reason it's close is that um, Well, we, uh, the reason it's close is because you're we're we're in bull, full blitzing mode here, and uh, at one point, the the disparity in the value between points is not so great. In fact, there's an advantage to, to having the deeper the the higher open points, and that you don't you can bring these. It's easier to bring these down from the midpoint. Um, okay, but anyway, that was a good example of okay. Are are we blitzing? Are we are not blitzing here? We've got some signs that we should be blitzing. We made the deep points, but we don't have checkers in the zone. So in that case, it was actually a little bit better to, you know, to not play the bits blitzing play. We bring another checker in the zone, then you were, were more inclined to blitz. Uh, not always, uh, you know, not always straightforward. You kind of have to you know, feel it out. All right, next play. Five, four. Okay, what, uh, what's useful here? So are we blitzing here? First question. We've got what, nine? Not even nine, because the 11 doesn't count. Yeah, uh, typically I call that a half, but yeah, it's not really in the zone because it's not, no. You know, you, you need to be beyond the 10 for it to be useful to cover the four. So, uh, so yeah, we've got like six, seven, eight, eight and a half, say, in the zone. I might mm -hmm. use for freedom just coming out. Yeah, so we, you know, there, yeah, there's still a number of good things we could do. So, I, but the key thing here is that, okay, we're not really in a good blitzing position here. We've got, you know, we've got a strong board and we're certainly have the advantage. And we'd like to attack, but you know, I guess the question is, with this five, do we want to hit off the ace point? Because uh, if we were in a blitz, we want to hit off the ace point to prevent the prevent the anchor. But uh, we're not in a blitzing position we, necessarily because we we haven't made a deep point yet. Uh, we only have you know eight and a half checkers in the zone. 
So those two things say, well, you're not really blitzing yet. So, okay, so if you're not blitzing, that should tell you, okay, don't don't hit loose from the five, or don't hit loose using the five. Better to uh, you know, do something else that's useful. We could bring two checkers down, we could bring these in, we could come out, as Jacob suggested. Um, uh, so what come, we just come straight out with that. You know, there's certainly good reason for that. Uh, typically, if you've, if you've got, you know, we got five checkers in the midpoint and uh, a blot on the eight, typically you want to cover that with a five. Um, uh, and that, you know, that does bring a checker into the zone to cover the, the four or the two. Um, so, uh, you know, the answer is, it, actually that is right, to come up and down. Uh, two down is not bad. That's, you know, now, now you're prepared to, not, now you've brought two more checkers in the zone. Now you've got, uh, what, 10 and a half in the zone from eight and a half. Uh, so now you're re fully ready to blitz. Um, uh, so that's a strong play. Coming out, that's also not a bad play. Uh, it's, let's see if these, or too too far off. Yeah, these. Um, it doesn't. The, the, I guess the problem with coming out is that you you sort of you're not enhancing your blitz. You still have a good blitz potential here. Uh, you're and in fact you're leaving a blot here, so you're, you're giving up some jokers. Um, and so you know, black may dance again. If black dances again, you really want to be in a position to to you know to go for the throat. So by you know, and this play you know you brings up. Uh, you know, brings up, you can run. If, if Black comes in with an ace to anchor, then, you know, then you're going to switch your game plan. You're no longer blitzing. You want to bring checkers around. Uh, if Black doesn't come in or comes in does, and doesn't anchor, now you've got, you know, an extra checker in the zone, uh, which and, and you've covered a point. So uh, if you can't attack with it, you can at least block with it, prime with it. Um, so all those, all those things come into play. Um, and then this is the pure running play. This actually is has a fairly high winning percentage, so not not quite as the the balanced play. But um, you know, if you just wanted to win win the game, uh, this would probably be a stronger play, stronger play than two down at least. All right. Of course. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's another good question: Are we uh, are we blitzing here, or what? So I see a couple of good plays. We could hit with the two, bring one down, or bring one up. We could put an extra checker on the bar. What uh, What do you think the answer is? And put another checker on the bar. And likes to check on the bar, okay. Uh, I might try the, the full blitz play, yeah. Down okay. and hit. Down and two, down and hit. Yeah. 13, seven, six, four. Okay, so, um, you know, both of those are really strong plays. You know, the uh, um, the question is, you know, which, which one is right here and how do you tell? So, uh, the key things here are, again, are you are you in blitz mode here? If you're in blitz mode, you should blitz. Uh, or you have the if you're in a blitzing formation, a blitzing position. So what's a blitzing for, formation again? Uh, well, the key signs are you've got you know ten or more checkers in the zone. Here we've got eleven in the zone, and then you made a deep point. Here we made the ace point. So we should really be thinking, okay, this is blitz time. Uh, let's make the blitzing play. So the blitzing play is going to be keep your opponent from anchoring. The two goes here, six to four. And then the question is, okay, what's the best six? Um, and so, you know, after you do that, two on the bar, uh, generally you're going to want to have more covers. So it's going to be coming down with the six. So let's just see. See that. Uh, and that is the best play. Uh, coming out isn't bad either. Um, you know, it's not quite the the right 
strategy, but it's secondary is, you know, if you, you don't want it to anchor, so you hit there. That's the main idea. Uh, uh, and then coming down to bringing that cover, you're in full blitz mode right now. Um, and it's more important to get this point, keep black on the bar, prevent him from anchoring than, than anything else. Uh, the coming up, you know, those are certainly useful. You're going to want to bring these guys up uh, eventually. Uh, Black's got something that's not a big deal, but, it, you know, it's, it's a three prime. It's not not really a prime, but, you know, it's not, it's it's a minor obstacle course, but it's not, uh, it's not like he's got nothing here. But uh, certainly, you know, the blitz, you're in blitz mode. You need to blitz. You need to keep him from anchoring. You got to hit loose. And that's the main thing. And then what you do with the six, uh, you know, is not as important. It's, uh, you know, there's a, there are better plays or worse plays, but uh, the key thing is to realize that you got to hit, you know, you got to hit uh, him, hit, keep black uh, from anchoring there. Um, okay. Two more to look at. So, what do we have here? I'm I'm covering my one for sure. Yeah, Just, I'm probably bringing down a six based on what we saw last time. Yeah. Plus, plus you're unstacking your thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. So this is are we are we blitzing here? Almost. We are yeah. actually bringing well, down. Well, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, this is a we're sort of in transition here. We're you know we've got what six, seven, eight, nine checkers in the zone, not really blitzing formation yet, but we you know we slotted our ace point, um, and so uh, we're not really ready to blitz. But you know we rolled the five. We might as well cover it. He's got two in the bar, uh, so we're not we're not really in blitz mode yet, but we. We are we are going to be after this play. I mean, obviously, we don't want um, with two on the bar, especially. You know, we don't want to get hit here, uh, and and we have the chance to make a point. So let's make the point. Uh, and the question then is, well, what do you do with the six? Well, um, you know, we've only got nine in the zone. If we bring the six down, uh, we'll have ten in the zone. That's better. It'll be you know diversified and spread out diversified to make another point or to hit loose if black should enter. Um, and, you know, obviously we're not going to do eight to two. So that, cause that, why, why would you give him a block to hit? And so it's a question, you know, do you bring one down or you come up uh, with five checkers on the midpoint? It should be fairly uh, pretty clear to, to come down. Uh, surprisingly though, uh, it's, it, it's not really that much of an error to come out, but, uh, you know, it should be, uh, it, it just should be fairly straightforward. You, you want to cover just so he doesn't get hit. And then you want to bring one down, to bring checkers in the zone and more chances to either point or hit loose or do something. Um, uh, surprisingly, if you look at this, uh, you're actually, your winning chances are better if you come up, which is, Seems kind of odd to me, but I guess if you're you're going to hit loose, so you might get. Uh, you, 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 the gamuts are much better if you bring one down, which is why it's the better play. But your winning, your actual winning chances are better with running. Okay, uh, last one for tonight. So what do we have here? Well, you can you can go for freedom twenty two thirteen. You can hit on the nine, nine three thirteen ten or nine three seven four. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, and so which which is probably which is best, and how do you tell? Well, if you want to have more more wood, I think probably best is nine three seven four. Gives more flowers. I yeah yeah. So well, a couple things here. Are we? This is an interesting one. Are we? Are but we, it what, might not be that easy to get get in if you're hit back. You might get stuck over there. Yeah. Yeah, black, black. In this case, black has a three point board. That's that's nothing to sneeze at, uh, and so you want to be more careful uh, than you would when black had a, you know just a one point or two point board. Um, so uh, Jacob's suggesting, but but you know, do we do we attack here? Are we blessed? Well, that's the lesson. <laughs> Gary, I was reading some of the world class uh, book today, and one point they made about the cube, since since black has the cube or the cube is in play is you know you really kind of want the gammon more badly than if the cube weren't in play so that to me means that you hit nine to three and maybe even go um, and then i don't know whether it's 13 10 or seven to four but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, actually, one thing I mentioned, Ray was asking about. I see, I've heard that before. Yeah, if you've turned the cube, you really want to go for the gamut. You want to get that four points. So you're going to be a little more aggressive. Uh, do it. Also, uh, we've got eleven checkers in the zone, so that tells us, you know, we're in full blitz mode. So nine to three is right. Um, or, uh, yeah, ninety three to hit is right. And the question is, okay, which is better? Uh, if you do, because we're bringing down to the template. So this one really doesn't cover, at least not very well. Uh, it does, it's a seven. So you got like five, two, six, one, three, four. Uh, four is already covered. So it adds a couple of extra hits or a couple of extra um, numbers. But uh, this one isn't bad either because you've got more covers here. Um, so, so, so they're all pretty close. It doesn't really matter. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, and I wonder if we go back, if you look at this, this is actually the DNP play. This, the safe play for the reasons that, that, you know, Anne pointed out is that if we get hit, we could have problems here. So if we only, if we only needed to win these two points, that would be the play. Uh, let's see if it matters if the cube is turned. Yeah, it does matter. If the cube, yeah, if the cube is turned. Um, not turned. You want to come out and get the win. You're going to get. Uh, you're going to play on to get two points. It's a you know it's a double. Unless black comes in, it's a double. Um, and a. Well, if if black doesn't come in, it's too good to double. If black comes in and anchors, it's a double and probably a pass. Um, uh, so that you know, that's an interesting sign. Too. This is actually the safe play, and there are certain scores where you'd want to do that. Uh, and to, and with the cube turned, you know, that's it's the right play. Um, is you know, again, if you're you want to be more aggressive, if you, if you have the if you if we, the cube has already been turned because you want the gamut. It's worth far more. Um, okay. All right. Uh, all right. That's it for tonight. Thanks, Gary. You're welcome.